Today's tennis ball is this one. Can I catch it? Yeah, I'm gonna knock over the tripod while I do it. That was awful, Myron. And welcome to the Once Upon a Corgi podcast. We are a crafty puppy podcast coming to you from Southern Connecticut. I am your host, as always, Gabby, and we are joined with both corgis today. Iron and Audrey are Pembroke Welsh corgis. You can find me everywhere online as Gabigales and all my hand dyed yarn at Once Upon a Corgi. Thank you back, everybody who is a returning viewer, and hello and welcome to all new viewers. We have our hot tea today in our Halloween David Steam mug. Ta da! This is episode 55 and we are recording this on January 24th. We have a couple of administrative stuff to get into before we get into the knitting. Mostly just a reminder that uh, Once Upon a Corgi Hand Dyed Yarns and Fuse Fiber Studio are holding a joint knit night pop-up shop at her studio on February 10th. There is the card. So if you are in the Connecticut area, New York, Massachusetts, depending on where you are in the state, um, come hang out. It'll be a nice night of fun in Avon. And Avon's a delightful town anyway, so. And they have a really good yarn store. You can just make a whole day at it. We are going to have two giveaways coming up. Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast and Knitting Expat Designs has graciously donated two copies of her new sock collection that's being released this year, the Cozy Sock Collection and the Wonder... Wanderlust sock collection. I'm going to put up threads in the Ravelry group for those. I'm gonna do separate threads. Yeah, I'm gonna do separate threads and the prompts will be up in there. I haven't thought of them yet, so there we go. And I will close that out uh, second week in February, I believe, just to give everybody a little bit of time to enter. Let's get into the crafting. We'll start off with what am I wearing? I am wearing my finished Betty dress by Sew Over at London in, I wanna say this is cotton and steel double gauze. I have hemmed it, it's actually hemmed, and I did the blind stitch hem. Last time I talked to you, it was still just the surged edge, which is rainbow surge because I haven't, I'm not comfortable enough to change it out into the two same color threads, but no more learning, it's fine. I have the Singer Pro Finish serger that I am housing for a friend in one of my knit groups because she doesn't really use it and I I will give it lots of love so that is what I'm wearing I'm also wearing my Volca socks but they have dog hair all over them because they're in my house so I'm not going to shove my feet in the camera and save you that you're welcome we have two finished no we have three I forgot one hold on we have three finished objects for you this week. Last week we had none. This week we have all of them. So we're going to start with oldest to newest. Oldest is uh, my pair of zombie kangaroo socks. This is my hand dyed yarn on the Isaac base, which is 100% superwash Polworth. And I did some blood of my blood on the ginger base for the afterthought heels. No ends have been woven in, but they are just going to be show socks. So. I'm probably not gonna weave them in ever, but that's fine. So there we are. I kitchenered the heel today. That's that's how newly finished these guys are. I think I knit them last. I knit them. I started knitting them last year. They were supposed to be part of my box of socks. I still finished with ten, twelve though. I don't know what happened. Magic. Magic. So there we go. We just did a uh, cut in afterthought heel, uh, two by two rib, and round toe, which is looking quite pointy today. So those are our first finished socks of the new year, even though it was just the heels. But who's keeping track this year?
our other finished object you have seen on Instagram if you follow me there. And that is the Surprise Party Shawl by Helen Stewart. And this was released during Indie Entangled uh, in the 2017 Rhinebeck weekend. And this is out of Hugh Loco Yarn where I worked their booth for the night. And this is her um, tweed sock in the rosehip colorway and her Color Riot mini set in the Outlander colors. And this was such a joy to knit. It flew by, relatively speaking, for being a giant shawl and having like 500 plus stitches on the needles at one point. It went by much faster than I would have thought. And it's blocked out beautifully. I love it so much. I cannot say enough good things about Helen Stewart patterns. You can't, I just can't. I love them all, dearly. I haven't knit them all yet, but one day I will, I'm sure. And Hue Loco yarn is as beautiful as it looks online. If you've never knit with it, I highly recommend it. And her shop is always stocked. There's always something there for you to get. So there we go. And I don't know if this has brought back my shawl mojo, but it's getting close. Our third and final finished object I posted on Instagram this morning, I think, and that is my Pumpkin Spice Mittens by Skein Deer Knits. I knit um, the same pattern on the right and the left because I loved the little coffee bean so much. Ooh, I have hair in my eye. And this is out of my hand dyed yarn, Once Upon a Corgi. The orange is our tweed base iron in the Pum Queen colorway, and the black is on the ginger base, and that is Nightmares Plus 10. So you get a little bit of Stellina on the cuff mostly. I love them, they fit so nice. They're perfect, my finger just reaches. And the little pumpkin. Do you see the little pumpkin? Did you drop your ball? Is it stuck? You dropped it. Where'd you put it? Oh. Here. All right, it's on the bed. Let's get it. It's on the bed. So these are, they have been wet blocked and I put them on my sock blockers momentarily, but I was afraid that I was going to stretch it out. I don't have mitten blockers, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna knit enough mittens to justify buying them, but I love these. I haven't worn them outside yet because it's been too warm. It's been like high 30s, low 40s, so not quite mitten weather. Not for just letting the dogs out. Don't even think about it. You cannot jump off this side. There's too much stuff. It's very hard to point at you in mittens. So there we go. I love this pattern. If you've never knit any of Ellie's patterns, I highly recommend it. They were just delightful. Ooh, close up of the colorways. See if that'll focus. Slightly blown out, but oh, I love it. I love them so much. They're just so squishy and it's only the fingering weight. I have yet to knit the DK weight ones, but I will one day. So those are finished objects number three, and I finished these on, I wanna say Sunday night, maybe? I did from like mid coffee swirl to the fingers and the thumb all in one night. I just sat down and just didn't move and did that and it was beautiful. So those are all my finished objects. So next week when I have none, we'll just balance it out and like every other week have a billion or zero. Moving on to what we are working on. Uh, I'm not going to show you the Zion sweater. It is a stockinette rectangle, nothing new. I will bring it back when I get into the lace section because it's really not worth it. Not, not worth it, but just not exciting. But I will show you progress on the Seafarers cardigan, which I'm knitting for Jake out of O Wool in their Legacy DK yarn in the Black Bear colorway. This is a discontinued yarn. So I'm in the middle of the row and praying that I don't need to buy any more. I think I bought 13 skeins for him. Maybe 17, 13 or 17. I think I bought myself 13. I don't know. I bought a lot and I don't want to look at the receipt. 
Man, I would finish this row, but it's a right side row. So I will insert a photo of what it's supposed to look like, but here we are so far. This is the back of the cardigan, holy blowout. Um, it is knit bottom up and pieced, and the more I look at it, the less cabley it looks, but it's still cabley. Um, I don't have, I would like this done by Ryan back up this year for his sake but I'm not really pushing myself on it too much. I would like to get some major things off the needles fairly quickly so I can focus on this, mostly the Zion sweater. Now that I have the shawl done, that frees up a lot of time. I do have one other shawl on the needles, but that might turn into my knit group knit and just only work on it on knit group and have no timeline, which is fine. It's my knitting. I can make up the rules if I want to, but I would like to get a uh, hub two on this one because I do really like it, and I know he will love wearing it. D Ooh, look at how much dog hair is on that. We just, not on it, knit into it. It's not coming out. So this has gotten some love. Perhaps it will get more love this weekend. This is mostly proof that I am still working on it. I have not totally abandoned Jake's sweater yet. Feel really bad because I knit his first sweater too short so I should probably knit him one that really fits for real. I am gonna fix the other one because that's Brooklyn Tweed and that costs a lot of money so I would like somebody to wear that sweater. The other thing that we have been working on this week is our Christmas Eve cast on which is also in the middle of a round so we're gonna finish that one off because it's just one needle and these are this was my Halloween and Christmas Eve cast on it is the Jack and Sally self-striping colorway by Jinx Yarn, and I'm using Legacy Fiber Arts The Mayor on their Cozy Toes base for the cuffs, heels, and toes. Oops. And we have put in our heel, and I did the mini heel flapping gusset and um, square heel from Mina's patterns. So there we go. And we just, you know, we've done all of our decreases, so we are in knit city. And just round and round and round and round. Here's the first sock that I cast on on Halloween and cast off around Thanksgiving. So we're on the second sock. We're almost done. No rush this year. I just love Jinx self-striping. This is my second skein from Jinx and I love them more and more every time. I also really like the Mayer colorway. I still have, um, I just wound off a 20 gram mini from my full skein. So I do have like an 80 gram skein somewhere in here. I have to find it. I don't have to find it. I know where it is. It should be in this cubby because it, yeah, it should be here. Um, I don't know what I want to do with it yet. I kind of want to do something brioche, but I also kind of just want to knit it into like a sock head hat because I really like it. Oh, just look at these speckles. And this is my first skein. No, it's not. I did the um, Advent Calendar. This is my first solo skein of Legacy Fiber Arts, which I got at Needles Up this past Rhinebeck weekend. And they're going to Maryland Sheep and Wool. So if you are going to that, they're doing a, like a pre Maryland Sheep and Wool needles up festival and that is what we have been working on we are going to have a spinning day tomorrow and i'm very excited about that so i'll show you what i will be spinning so i will be spinning the classy squid fiber co uh behind the rain bat which i got at new england fiber festival not 2016 not last year but the year before so there we go and i'm going to be mixing it with this lavender angora which i'm very excited about i'm not going to card them together i'm just going to weigh them out into bumps and kind of just spin them together as i go and i also have this bag of i believe this is also angora 
that a woman in my knit group had that she brought. So us spinners took some and it is so soft. So I might spin this in there too, kind of to bulk it up because I do want to knit the Pinolith, Pinolith Cowl by Becky Sorensen from the Stringing It Together podcast. I should have a photo up here. It does call for 200 grams of an Aran weight and I'm hoping with both Angora I can get close to that. Um, right now I have about four ounces of fiber. So I'm halfway there. But I also want to spit up my Doctor Who Christmas special Rolags from Classy Squid and have that be the contrast. And this is only two ounces. So I might just make the cowl I don't know. Maybe I'll just try and knit it instead of an Aaron. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know that's what I want them to be. So I'm going to make it work no matter what. That is the goal. But we will see. I'm hoping I can bulk it up to get close to the four ounces slash I usually always have a lot of yarn left over for projects. So I'm hoping that kind of evens it out. I'm probably not going to get a full Aaron weight because I'm not really good at determining the weight of the yarn I spin. I just sort of aim for the, the thinnest I can get and I usually get between a DK and a worsted weight. But we will see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna look up our Craftsy class today and uh, go over our notes. I'm excited though. I'm excited to get spinning again. Edgar has just been staring at me from the corner of my craft nook begging to be spun so we're gonna I'm gonna oil him up today and make sure everything's in tip-top shape so tomorrow he's ready to go more plans uh, I was hoping to do the I guess this is dream knitting section my dream projects uh, I'm I want to do a video for the make nine challenge goal thing I'm gonna do my knitting and sewing all in one I'm just waiting for some yarn to come in the mail so I can do that because otherwise I with minus that yarn that I'm waiting for, I have everything for all my projects for the year that I want to make. So once I have that in, then I'll do it. So that was my dream spinning. We will do the make nine later. Yep. Which is going to lead us into the non-crafting-ish section. So if you are not here for that, thank you so much for watching. And if you are here for the shop update and our light things, let's get into it. We will be having a shop update tomorrow, Thursday, January 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And let me go get that yarn. When I say get yarn, I also mean eat my body weight in jelly beans. All right, so in our shop update, we'll be having an iron update, which is our BFL tweed base. And this just came out of the spin dryer, so it's a wee bit damp. We will have Monian Down, which is one of our Outlander colorways. There we go. Along with that, we will have a Sunday morning, Rodney, nose stuck in a book, mm. on the Oliver, Marie Cutie, and Ginger base, we will be having Hedwig, Oswald for mayor, because you can't have too much office in your life, Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. So again, that is tomorrow, Thursday, January 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I hope you guys can make it. If you do want to um, keep up to date with shop updates, die lists, events, new bases that are coming out, all that sort of thing, there is a newsletter you can sign up for on my website, onceuponacorgi.com. And uh, that comes out Wednesday nights, just as a little preview of what's coming up in the next update slash what's going on in Once Upon a Corgi Land. All right, the rest of this is life stuff slash non-knitting, non-crafting. I need some tea for this. So we have been watching Frontier. I've watched season one and part of season two. Jake is not, so he's watching season one and I'm re-watching it with him. It is amazing. It's a 1700s Montreal area fur trading. Delightful. And Jason Momoa. I think that's how you say his name. Paul Drogo slash Aquaman is in it, so it's delightful. I love him so much. And this past weekend, 
uh, as you can see, somebody went to Ikea. Was this here in the last podcast? No, it hasn't been. No, I only set this up on Saturday, right? We went on Saturday, Adrian? I don't remember. Yes, so uh, a lot of people have words for 2018 and my quote unquote word, I didn't write it down, I just sort of repeat it to myself, is refine. So I'm using that to refine business skills and business stuff, like what bases, what colorways, that kind of thing. And I'm also using it to like also mean simplify and organize. So go through all my stuff, kind of like refine what I need versus what I am willing to part with slash don't need. It's just kind of being clutter in my house. So I finally gave up my hemming and hawing and got myself a new stash shelf because the other one wasn't working and I wanted it to because I didn't want to buy something else. So I just made it work and it wasn't working. So we gave up and we bought one. <laughs> so for life stuff, I'm going to give you a mini tour of my crafty nook and apologies for the podcasting mess because I'm probably not gonna clean it up while I do this. All right, craft room tour. So we have our new Ikea shelves. We have joined that bandwagon and we have reorganized the stash. So up here we have our zombie Squidward that Candace gave us that we have to get a frame for still. Um, some antique spools from spinning meals, meals, spinning mills that I got at New England. My lazy Kate, my drop spindles, a bag of needles that I have to put away, socks that need ends woven in. And this is behind the yarn bowl Jake's mom made me, is Jake's jar of sock yarn. This is yarn that I'm going to make a shawl out of one day for Jake's niece. And then we get down to level one. So this is all the yarn I want to knit this year. This is all the sweater quantities, socks, and shawl bits that I've set aside. Um, it is a variety of my yarn and other dyed yarn, as you can see. Here is our stripey sock yarn section. So we have our self-striping yarn, mostly mustache. We have some spicy homemaker and peach queen, uh, sock blanks galore. And behind there, we have our commercial yarn. So our regia, our opals, couple Italian people, our Zauber balls, and this is where our um, sweater notebook is. We are going to start using it this year. Let's go down to level two. This is our other yarn. This is everything else. Mostly fingering, oh yeah, this is all the other fingering weight stuff I have in my stash. So, yeah, no, no idea. Most of these are probably gonna be socks, let's be real but I might pair some together and do shawls. And here we have, this doesn't go here, that goes here. This is the rest of Jake's sweaters quantity for his sweater and then one lone skein of Lake Erie from my sweater that uh, I found after I de-stashed the other three skeins. So I just have a little lonely guy. I'm gonna save him for a shawl, I think. I do like this yarn a lot. So that is that, and I got, um, this is where I'm keeping all my needles and notions. So we have giant notions pouch, needles, stitch markers, spinning tags, all that is in here. Down here we have our blocking mats, which are children's play mats I got at Target. This is our spinning cubby. This is not all my fiber. I do have another bin with fiber in it. Here is my bags and I have to go through my bags. All of my heavier weight yarn. So we've got some chunky, some worsted, some DK, some lace. <laughs> a lot of them are like one skein worsted weight, so maybe hats. A lot of them are probably gonna end up being gift knits, which is fine. A lot of it is super wash yarn, so it's perfect for that. All right, and last but not least, we have kits. So these are all of kits I've either most of these I have won at um, yarn crawls, but they're patterns and yarns all ready to go. And a lot of these I am going to knit as gifts, as well as 
socks I need to fix. So there's either holes in them or my bind offs are too tight. So I can't get like these are my because I love I love you more than pumpkin spice socks, but my bind off is so tight I can't get it over my foot. So I need to rip the cuff out and redo them. But they're beautiful socks and I really want to wear them. So those are here. And then this one, oops, a bag, an escape bag. Is all of my scraps. Ooh, there we go. So we've got like our Harry Potter socks, my fades in here, um, skeins that were practice dye that I don't know what to do with. Just lots of scraps. This year we need to figure out what to do with our scraps. Desk is about the same. Sewing machine, serger. And then uh, this has not changed. This is holding um, quilting fabric for project bags and potential quilts. Soils as my sewing box and my French hood that I need to fix. Some of the pearls fell off. And down here is the other bin O fiber, which is all my natural fiber. So I have Icelandic Shetland, some Romney. Most of these are just like, I got, um, I think I got them all at SEA events. So they're just some random bags. Some Romney, um, some Cormo, little Cormo thing. Yeah, these are all, these are mostly my natural, natural fibers, while the other ones are dyed. And lots of merinos. Actually, not that much merino. I think there's only like two things of merino and a couple of silk hankies. The rest are Targi, Cheviot, and then Super Blends. Yeah, and that's basically it for the craft section. So, um, this is also the pile of pants I have to fix for Jake that I just haven't gotten to, and some Santa Claus things I told a friend I would sew together for them and also happened so that is basically it I did not end up um I went through my yarn and I kind of put aside some stuff for D stash but some of them are gifts so I feel a little bit weird D stashing them but I'm also I don't think I'm going to use them so um, I might put up an Instagram post if I do D stash and then anything that was given to me as a gift I will just ask for paying is shipping because I'd rather have it go to a home where it's going to be used or go into a project immediately not immediately but like I'd rather have them go to somewhere where they're going to get used rather than just sit in my stash for years on end the idea of having the same yarn in my stash for like more than five years is starting to freak me out a little bit not like I'm anywhere near that but I don't I don't think I would like my yarn stash to be like that unless it's a very special skein like Buffalo Wool Company, because that needs to be the perfect skein. Or no, that needs to be the perfect project. That kind of thing. I don't know. Now I'm rambling. So I'm probably going to do a de-stash in a little bit. I have gone through a lot of it and kind of set it aside. But every so often I pick it up and go, oh no, this would go really well with this other yarn. So we will see. I might do the same thing with um, fabric, because I do have not a lot, but a good quilting amount of fabric left that like I'm just not going to use. But that's for a later date. I don't want to even think about going through that. I went through my apparel fabric and organized that as well. But no matter what I do, that will always look disastrous because there's no way to make eight yards of velvet look small and dainty. So we won't go there. So that is the crafting tour. I'll bring you back to the pretty thing. So yeah, that is my new craft area. I'm really glad everything fits. I'm really glad everything fits the way it does. It does not I do not think I can hold any more unless I spin down my fiber stash, which really, after I took the bat out, has opened up a lot. And a lot of these things set aside are going to go into a sweater spin. I'm going to drum card them together and do that. Don't know when, but eventually. It just makes me feel a lot better about my stash instead of having it sort of be on a shelf and then also be on bins on the floor. And this is Jake's side of the bed, so it it was encroaching on his bed space a little bit and I did not want to be that guy. So I'm very happy with it. I highly recommend the classic Ikea stash shelves as always. So that is it, I believe. Welcome to my refining of my craft nook. 
I would like eventually one day to get like a nice armchair or something in here. Um, the two little tables aren't going to be there forever, but I would like a nice armchair that I can sit in it or sit and spin and be in this area because I don't spend a lot of time in this area just when I'm sewing. And I would like to spend more time in the bedroom vicinity because it is not near the yarn office, which is basically where the dining room would be. So if I'm in the living room, I'm staring at work the whole time. So I would like to come back into here more often to really relax instead of trying to relax and then staring at my wall of yarn going, oh, I should label that or maybe I should package this up and oh, I should probably do something probably with taxes because businessing. So yeah, this is my rambly tour. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for checking me out if this is the first time viewing the podcast and we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>